Hello everyone. In this episode I wanted to show you how you can split a head and body morph into two separate sliders. If you've either made the morph in ZBrush or you brought something in from a wrapping software or whatnot, this is the way to do it. I'm using a little tool for this called Shape Splitter, and here's how this works. So this is a character that I have brought in from a 3D scan. This is the Genesis 8.1 base female and with one slider I can turn her into this custom shape now and that's all good but it's one slider and I'd like to separate the head out from the body here's how we do that I don't think it matters if the slider is active or not I'm going to deactivate it for now and then I'll go over here into my content library and under utilities I find this thing with that slightly creepy promo image. Don't judge it by that. It's a really good product. If you double click it here, then you'll find uh, essentially one script that you need to launch, which is called the shape splitter. These are all kind of deformer shortcuts here. There's a very comprehensive, large, large product. And I encourage you to read the PDF manual that comes with it. There's also a set of tutorial videos that comes with it. But I'm going to go through the literally the basic usage options now. And that is this, uh, this big window here. So there's divide and combine and save assets and so forth. We want to be on divide and we want to also be on this option here, which is the easy way. I like easy. I like fast. And this is what this product does, which is kind of cool. So I want to split out the head. So I'm going to select that here. And then the only thing this product really needs to know is what slider are you talking about? What would you like to separate the head from? And we select that down here under step two, where it says select a property. So mine is under morphs, morph loader here. And that's this one here, Anneli from wrap. That's it, just select it and then hover away from it. And then that, that morph is selected here. So I can go and literally leave everything on the defaults and just hit the preview button and see what happens. And that now means the software is going to go through the little calculation here and comes up with that. And this is exactly what it would create now. If I say save morph, this is the kind of morph that would be split out. Not exactly what we want. I guess the head is a little bit too low. And the reason for that is, uh, is that my, um, I'm going to go close this out, is because my morphed figure was shorter than the Genesis figure. And that's a common thing, of course. Not only is she shorter, I believe if we looked at it very close, she's not a symmetric um, figure. So I would imagine that not only the Y position shifts, but also the X and perhaps even the Z position as I dial this in. And the script is clever enough to correct that. Yeah, if I look really closely, I think she moves her head slightly to the left. And uh, that is something if we're accurate about it, then well, that would get in the way. So thankfully, there's a way to uncalculate this with the script. Let me go do this again, run the script. Also serves the purpose of showing you this multiple times. So I'm going to go and select head here. And then I'll go and pick the morph that that is in question here, this one. And then I'll go and hit preview again just so that the kind of bad calculation can happen and there's a head sunken in there. Now comes the fun part. There's this button here where it says position fixing X, Y, and Z. Let's hit the calculate button and that calculates as this position here. So we can see that mainly the Y position has changed, but also the Z and the X. So that's quite, that's kind of nice. Let's go hit preview again to see what that, what that position change would do. And here, there we go. It's perfect now. It's exactly what we want. So this is the morph I'd like to save out as my head morph. So I'm going to go and uh, use this button down here, save morph. And then a little tiny dialog comes up that lets me pick a position of the actual morph slider. So I'm going to go and keep it in my position, which is morphs morph loader. Whoops. <laughs> morphs morph loader. The default would be actor shape splitter, but it doesn't really matter that much. I just want to keep them in one place so I can separate them out later and reshuffle them later. I'm going to call this Anneli head. And that's all I need to do. Hit accept and that'll save my new morph out. If you've made a mistake, then there's also the option to overwrite a morph that you already have. So if you've accidentally made it so that the head is kind of sunken into the body, you can just go and run the calculation again, keep the same naming properties and just overwrite that morph with that other option. So if I go and close this out under parameters, and I have these two. So this is the one that I had before. That's the one that's the combined version. And this one now goes and just does the head and does a marvelous job at it if I say so myself. Very good, very good. And so the Genesis body is now the base body, but only the head changes. That's very, very cool. But of course, it doesn't 
give me a body morph automatically. This slider here is still the body and the head combined. So what do I do if I wanted to split out the body? Glad you asked because it is essentially the same process that we've just done, but in reverse. So let me go zoom out a little bit and show you this one more time. How do we, how we do the, the body split now? So once again, run the script. And in here, I'm going to select the head. I'm going to select my morph that I want to split out, which is, of course, the combined version, this one here. And now I can go and use this option down here, which is called essentially this one step forward says preview. This says for selected, that's the default. But if I select this one remaining, then I will essentially invert my selection. And that is what I want. That is exactly what I want. Let me go and do the preview thing again so that we see kind of the, the crazy morph there with that looks like this now, which is, you know, not what we want. But that's again uh, down to a, a position change. So much like we had before, I need to go and calculate the position fixing for XYZ like this and then I get these values here but one other super important thing uh, I need to invert this as well if I don't do that what will happen is that even though my position is fixed the body would now kind of lift up and get glued to the head but it would not be on the ground plane anymore so if we go and invert this and now go and preview this again then the body will stay on the ground and the Genesis base head will remain in position. And now we have essentially what we want. So let's go and hit save remaining morph. I'll go and put that into morphs morph loader again and call it Anneli body. There we go. This is a character I got from 3DSK, by the way. I'll see if I can texture her in her entirety. That's going to be a really nice challenge. There we go. Close. Under parameters, we now have the body, just the body, and we also have the head both separately. And you can dial them in as much or as little as you want, combine them with other sliders, and that's, that's kind of how you do that. Very, very cool. So now this slider here, we can go and delete. If you wanted to ever do that, you just right click on any of this gray space here, head into edit mode, and then you can go and uh, right click on the slider you want to remove and hit delete selected property. So I'll do that. Takes a moment to calculate. And then I have exactly what I want. There we go. If you don't want this to live under Morph's Morph Loader, you can use that little gear icon here. Click on it, head over to Parameter Settings, and I'll use the head here. So the heads, they usually live in the label you can leave as it is. So the path is the one that you need to change. So that is, if you want it to be cohesive with all the other DAS morphs, you'd say Actor do spell that correctly otherwise it'll end up in its own category there so actor head and then you have people and then usually in this case it would also be real world and if you do that you can also change the name here that's the value that's being used under the hood in das studio the label is what people will see but the name needs to be unique so it has to be something that's that's unique usually you do that by uh, prefacing that with your initials like you know maybe i'll call it j and then you know that's that that'll, that'll do the trick hit accept then it'll remove itself from here but if you head over now to actor head people real world i should find my morph slider here somewhere unless of course i've made a mistake <laughs> uh, no there it is it is in here and that is exactly where it should be you can add a little icon and all that but that's like embellishments that is in principle how it works i hope you liked it i hope it was helpful this is a question that comes up every once in a while i thought i'll address that and make a video about it you'll find a link to shape splitter in the description of this video if you click it and buy it via that i get a tiny commission from your sale which would be super appreciated of course thank you so much for watching and i hope i'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.